Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. This is Minister Van with When Christians Speak Talk Radio. And we just have some more words we want to encourage you during this season of Thanksgiving. How many know that every day should be a day of Thanksgiving? Um, we're going to go to, in a, in a little bit, we're going to go to the Word of God, Luke 17. That's going to be our main scripture, Luke 17. And the topic is, Are You One of the Nine? Are you one of the nine? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you right now, Lord God, thanking you, Father, for your many blessings in our lives. Thank you, Father, for this ministry, Lord God, when Christians speak, talk radio. Thank you, Lord God, that this is a vessel that we can use, Lord God, to get the word out to your people, to encourage someone, Lord God, who perhaps may have lost their way, Lord God, to have them return to you, Father. Lord, we thank you, Lord God, for your word, because you said in your word, that when it goes forth, it will not return unto you void. Lord, we thank you, Lord God, with our hearts of appreciation for all that you've already done, Lord God. We know and we believe and we trust in that the best is still yet to come. We thank you, Father, for all those who are listening and those who will listen, Lord God. And Lord, whatever they stand in need of, Lord God, we know, Lord God, that you will remind them, Lord God, through this word that is already provided. All they need to do is just thank you in advance. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen. Amen. Are you one of the nine? Luke 17th chapter, the 11th verse starts off with, And it came to pass, as he went to Jerusalem, that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. 12. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. 13. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy upon us. 14. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go, show yourselves unto the priests. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God. And fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. 17. And Jesus answering said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? There are not found that return to give glory to God, save the stranger. 19. And he said unto him, Arise, go thy way, thy faith has made thee hold. Let me ask you a question. Do you forget to return and thank God for what he's done for you? Are you one of the nine? Have you forgotten to thank him today? When you rose this morning, did you thank him? When you were able to put one foot in front of the other, did you thank him? When you started to move around and your limbs, joints, and muscles were actually doing their thing, they might not have been doing like they used to, but they were still moving about, did you take the time to thank him? When you open your mouth to say something, did any praises touch your lips? Did you remember to thank him that you could still talk? When you got to your destination, did you remember to thank him? Yes, we set aside this time of the year and we call it Thanksgiving. But I venture to say that we should set aside every day of the year and give him thanks. We take so many things for granted. We should thank him for what we consider to be little things, We should thank God for everything that we take for granted. Instead of complaining about what isn't going right, do you take the time to thank Him for what is going right? Instead of focusing on the negative, do you instead focus on the positive and take the time to thank God? How often do you go about and petitioning Him and yet when He blesses you, when he moves mountains, yet when he performs what we call miracles one after another, yet when he makes a way out of no way, do we take the time to thank him? How often do we go on our way and forget to pause, to turn back and say, thank you, Lord, for just one more day? Are you one of the nine? Or do you forget to return to the doctor of all doctors, the lawyer of all lawyers, the banker of all bankers? Do you sincerely remember to say, thank you, Lord, for giving me just one more day? Thank you, Lord, for giving me just one more paycheck, one more meal. Instead of complaining about that job, 
Do you thank him for giving you that job? Do you thank him for blessing you with wisdom? Do you remember to go return to him and thank him? Do you thank the Lord for blessings seen and unseen? You see here in the 17th chapter of Luke, we find there were 10 men who were struck with the illness of leprosy. Now during this era, anyone who had leprosy was considered to be an outcast. They could not be seen in public. They were actually shunned from society. So, when these 10 men saw Jesus from afar off, something lets me know that they had heard something about a man who could even heal this terrible disease. Something tells me that they got up enough courage to put aside the rules and laws of their era, and they mustered up enough faith to call upon Jesus. Now, I don't know how far in distance they were from him, because the scripture says they stood afar off, but this scripture lets me know that they had to call out to him. They took a chance. They could have been stoned. They took a chance. They could have been rebuked again by man. They just wanted to get the attention of Jesus. So they called out to Jesus because they were forbidden to come any closer to him. They weren't forbidden by Jesus, but by society. They were considered unclean. You see, leprosy was a contagious disease that affects the skin, mucous membranes, and nerves, causing discoloration and lumps on the skin, and in some severe cases, disfigurement and deformities. They knew they were not a pretty sight to look upon by man, but they had heard something about this man who was a miracle worker. They had heard something about this man who was passing by. Perhaps they had heard about the woman with the issue of blood who received her healing. For we found that in Luke 8, earlier in the scriptures, that Luke 8 says, And there was a woman having an issue of blood 12 years, which had spent all her living upon physicians neither could be healed of one she came behind jesus and touched the border of his garment and immediately her issue of blood staunched and jesus said in the 45th chapter of luke 8 who touched me when all denied touching him peter and they that were with him said master the multitude thung thee and pressed thee and savest thou who touched me And the 46th verse, Jesus said, Somebody has touched me, for I perceive that virtue has gone out of me. And the 47th verse says, And when the woman saw that she was not hid, she came trembling. And falling down before him, she declared unto him before all the people for what cause she had touched him, and how she was healed immediately. And the 48th verse, And Jesus said unto her daughter, Be a good comfort. Thy faith has made thee whole. Go in peace. So perhaps in Luke 17, these lepers had heard about this woman. And they believed that if he did it for them, for her, he could certainly do it for them. So they put aside their pride. They put aside their discomfort. They decided not to focus on their humiliation. They put aside their shame. And they called on the master healer. They called on Jesus. And when it came to pass, as he went to Jerusalem, that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers and stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy upon us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go, show yourselves unto the priests. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. As they went, they were made whole. It's important to pause here to reiterate that it was a known fact that the priest did not have the ability to heal anyone from leprosy. Only Jesus could do that. It's the same here. Man has not the ability to heal. God is the one that gives the gifts of healing. God is the one who heals. By showing themselves to the priest as being healed, the priest could then pronounce them clean and then they would be free to re-enter society. Normally, there is a ritual that needed to be performed by the priest for anyone who came before him on their day of cleansing. Cleansing. We can learn more about that in Leviticus, the 14th chapter, and the fourth, first verse, where the Lord speaks it to Moses, and he says in the second verse, This shall be the law of the leper in the day of his cleansing. He shall be brought unto the priest, and the priest shall go forth out of the camp, and the priest shall look, and behold, at the plague of leprosy be healed in the leper, then shall the priest command to take for him that is to be cleansed two birds alive and clean and cedar wood and scarlet and hyssop. And the scriptures go on to say in Leviticus, the first chapter, 
um, go on from the 5th verse throughout the 7th verse, actually to the 37th verse. These scriptures outline all the things the priest had to do before pronouncing a man was cleansed from leprosy. Hey man, you know what? We need to thank God that we are not bound by rituals to be performed by man. We need to thank God that we are living in a period of grace. We are living in a dispensation of grace. We need to thank God that we can go straight to the master physician. We need to thank God that we don't need to seek approval from man. We need to thank him for his son Jesus and how he shed his blood on the cross so that we no longer have to be held captive to diseases. So that we no longer be, have to be held captive to illnesses. So that we no longer will be held captive or victim to our past sins. We will no longer be slaves to sin. We need to give him thanks for he is a healer. We need to give him thanks for he is our savior to all of us who call upon him. Amen. We have so much to thank God for. The 13th verse. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy upon us. When these lepers called out to Jesus, they were in a suffering state. They were both physically, mentally, and emotionally sick. They were embarrassed by being in this state and shunned from society. Now, I don't know how long they had been in this state. I don't know how long they had been shunned. But I believe they came together and said, Enough is enough. We have nothing to lose and everything to gain. I believe they came to themselves and said, if we can just get his attention, we know we can be made whole. But somehow they had enough faith to believe that if they could just get Jesus' attention, that if they could get to his ears, they had enough faith to believe they would be made whole. And indeed, they got his attention. You see, I believe at that moment, the heaven stood still. I believe Jesus, knowing their hearts and knowing that this will yet be another opportunity to record in history just how powerful he is. He stopped. He paused in the middle of whatever he was doing, wherever he was headed. And he rewarded their faith by telling them to go and show themselves to the priest. This meant that when they reached the priest, they would have been healed from this disease. When they called out to Jesus, their faith got his attention. How many know when you call out to Jesus through faith, you got his attention? Jesus told them to show themselves to the priest, for he knew the laws of that time. And the 14th verse, And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourselves unto the priest. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. As they went, they were made whole. You would think that with all this that they had suffered, been humiliated, shunned from society, miserably, miserably, physically, mentally, emotionally, you would think that all ten of the lepers would have come, taken the time to come back and say, thank you, Jesus, for healing us. But only one of them did. What happened to the others? What happened to you? Are you one of the nine? Did you get so caught up in what's going on around you that when your blessings came through, you just met on your merry way and you forgot to take the time and give him thanks? Do you have a grateful heart, a heart full of thanksgiving every day for all the blessings God has bestowed upon you? And as one of them, and one of them, when he saw that he was here, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God and fell upon his face at his feet. Mm. giving him thanks, and he was a Samaritan. And Jesus said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? There are not found that return to give glory to God, save this stranger. And he says to this stranger, Arise, go thy way, thy faith has made thee whole. Thy faith has made thee whole. Whole, complete, nothing missing, nothing lacking, nothing broken. Whole. Are you using your faith to call upon Jesus? Then when he answers your call, do you take the time to turn back and with a grateful, sincere heart? Do you take the time to say, thank you, Jesus, for hearing my cry? Do you say, thank you, Jesus, for making me whole? Or are you one of the nine who doesn't come back to give him thanks? And when he had saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. The fact that the Bible records that the one who returned to give him thanks was a Samaritan as opposed to a Jew lets me know that Jesus wanted us to know this. Let's me know that Jesus recognizes all of us and there was something special about the Samaritans. So let's pause for a minute and let's give some history concerning the Samaritans. Because of their imperfect, 
adherence to Judaism and their partly pagan ancestry, the Samaritans were despised by ordinary Jews. Rather than contaminate themselves by passing through Samaritan territory, Jews who were traveling from Judea to Galilee or vice versa will cross over the river Jordan, bypass Samaria by going through other lands, and cross over the river again as they neared the destination. The Samaritans also harbored um, animosity towards the Jews. The Samaritans were separated from and looked down upon the Jews, makes them important in the New Testament. Jesus indicated a new attitude must be taken towards the Samaritans when he passed through the towns instead of crossing over the Jordan to avoid them. When he spoke with a Samaritan woman, contrary to Jewish custom, and when he said a tab would come when worshiping in Jerusalem or on Mount Gerizim would not be important. When asked whom to regard as our neighbor, Jesus told the story of the Good Samaritan precisely because Samaritans were despised. And we all may have perhaps remembered the story of the Good Samaritan in Luke 10 where it's recorded that this was a Good Samaritan who stopped and helped a man who had been beaten and left for dead. Luke 10 30, you can read about that. When Jesus says, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. And by chance there came down a certain priest that way, a priest that way. And when this priest saw this man that had been wounded and left for dead, he passed by on the other side. And likewise, a Levite, when he was at the place, came and looked on him and passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was. And when he saw him, he had compassion on him. And he went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine, and set him on his own beast and brought him to an end and took care of him. And Jesus asked the question, Which now of these three, thinkest thou, was neighbor unto him that fell among the thieves? And he said, He that showed mercy upon him, then Jesus said unto him, Go and do likewise. Are you one of the nine? Or do you thank God that it doesn't matter what nationality you were born into, whether Jews or Gentile, whether black or white, whether rich or poor, in God's sight, do you thank God that he loves us all? We need to take the time and thank him and give him thanks. Are you yet thanking him because you know who he is and who and that he is to be trusted with all your needs? Are you taking the time to thank him? Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. You know, we can read um, about um, Elijah in the first Kings 17th chapter. Um, first to the seventh verse talks about Elijah who was an inhabitant of Gilead. And Lazarus says, As the Lord of God of Israel liveth before whom I stand, there should not be dew nor rain these days, but according to my word. And the second verse says, And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Get thee hence, and turn thee eastward, and hide thyself by the brook Shereth, that is, before Jordan. And the fourth verse says, And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. So he went and did according to the word of God, the Lord. For he went and dwelt by the brook Shereth, that is, before Jordan. And the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning, and bread and flesh in the evening. And he drank of the brook. The seventh verse says, And it came to pass, and it came to pass, after a while that the brook dried up, because there had been no rain in the land. Let me ask you a question. Didn't God know the brook was going to dry up? But Elijah still trusted him. Elijah trusted God. You cast your cares totally upon him. Second Peter 5, one. That's just what Elijah was doing. The ravens were feeding him and he drank from a brook. Talking about humility. Totally leaning on God. Trusting in him with all your heart. And leaning not unto your own understanding. And the seventh verse says, And it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. And the, when the brook dried up, did Elijah still trust him? When the brook in your life dries up, or when it appears to dry up, do you still trust him? Do you still remember to give him thanks? When the rain stopped flowing, do you still trust him? Let's break that down. 
you were going doing all right for a while, but then something happened. It seemed like all of a sudden the blessings just stopped. You were doing all right for a while. You were going about your merry way, but then something happened. Your body began to feel pain. The doctor says he really doesn't know what's going on. I'm talking about those times when it seems like your get up and go has just got up and went. In summary, the storms were just raging in your life. Do you still trust him? Do you still find time to thank him? Psalms 106 says, Praise ye the Lord. O give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. For his mercy endureth forever. Not just talking about giving him thanks during a special time of the year, like a season called Thanksgiving. We need to give him thanks every day, for he is worthy to be praised. He is worthy to be thanked. When your circumstances appear the worst they can be, and you feel as though life is simply wearing you down, do you still thank him? When you think you've gotten to the end of your rope, and you don't even feel like you have to strip the tie and knot and hold on, do you still trust him? Do you still thank him? God is God. He's not a God that changes. So why not trust him? God is God whether you thank him or not. So why not totally and with a reservation from the heart thank him? We are yet breathing. We need to thank him. We still have food to eat and clothes to wear. We need to thank him. Revelation 7, 12 says, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might. Be up to our God forever and ever. Amen. A heart for thanks. Are you one of the nine? Or are you the one who comes back and remembers to give him thanks? As they went, they were made whole. Don't wait until your manifestation of your blessings to thank him takes place. Thank him now. Praise and thank him while you are yet waiting. For it's during the waiting season that he wants to know that you still trust him. It's during the waiting season that he wants to know that you still believe that he's a way maker. Praise and thank him now. Don't wait until you see the light at the end of this tunnel. Praise and thank him for that invisible light. That's faith. For now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Are you thankful every day, not just during a season set aside called Thanksgiving? Do you even know what this season of Thanksgiving is about? Praise God. Thank Him. Thank Him. Thank Him. How many of us have a feast to eat every day? Then shouldn't we be thankful? Shouldn't we be thankful? Should not we be thankful? Talking about faith. Talking about faith. Jesus looked at them and said, Go to the Jewish priest and show him that you are healed. As they were going, their leprosy disappeared. Talking about faith. At the time Jesus looked at them and told them to go to the priest, they had faith to believe that it was already done. You see, they called to Jesus. Do you call out to him? They listened. Do you listen to what he has to say? Though obeyed, are you obedient to his word? They went by faith and they were made whole. But only one came back to give him thanks. Is this your story? Are you the one who returns to God and give him praises? Are you one of the nine who neglected to come back and give him thanks? One of them came back to Jesus shouting, Glory to God, I'm healed. He fell flat on the ground in front of Jesus, face down in the dust, thanking him for what he had done. This man was a despised Samaritan. And Jesus said, Wait a minute, weren't there ten of you? Were in the nine? Where are the nine? Does only this foreigner return to give glory to God? Jesus told him, Stand up and go. Your faith has made you well. Are you one of the nine? Or did you remember to give him thanks? Thank you, Lord. In spite of your circumstances, he's yet faithful. Let's pause and give him thanks wherever you are right now. Give him thanks wherever you are right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you one of the nine? Are you one of the nine even in the waiting? Perhaps you are in the waiting right now. Waiting for your breakthrough. Perhaps even now you are going through some difficult times. Don't wait until you see your blessings. Stop praising him now. You might be saying to yourself. I'm sitting here Lord trying to figure this thing out all by myself. How did I get to this place? While am I am I struggling? How did I make a mess out of my life? At this stage of my life, I thought I'd be somewhere else doing something better. How do I turn things around? How do I make a way out of no way? And you tell me to trust you with all my heart and lean not to my own understanding. But Lord, this just doesn't make sense. Here I am in troubling waters. And you want me to trust you, Lord? Oh God, which direction do I turn? 
I turn to the left and it appears all hope is gone. I turn to the right and my friends have suddenly disappeared. I come home after a hard day's work and there's a note on my refrigerator. Wait, you say to yourself, did my husband just leave me? Oh Lord, I just can't see my way. My strength seems almost gone and you tell me not to fear, to trust you. Lord, I know I heard somebody say you were my refuge and my strength. I know I heard somebody say you are very present help in times of trouble. Well, Lord, this is my troubling times and I sure enough need you now. Lord, I don't want to be one of the nine. I don't want to forget you. I want to thank you in spite of. Lord, I want to trust you even in troubling waters. Lord, it seems like blessings are passing me by. It seems like everyone else is being remembered in the thriving. Lord, what about me? I don't want to be one of the nine. I want to thank you right now. Sometimes, Lord, I might feel like Dorothy in the fictional story of the Wizard of Oz. When she and her friends finally get to the end of the Yellow Brook Road and they come face to face with the wizard. The lion gets a new heart. The scarecrow gets some backbone. And the tear man gets, well, he never rushed again. Or so the story is told. And you are left wondering, like Dorothy was, well, what about me? So you ask that question. Is there anything in that bag for me? I want to go home. I want to go home. Let's doubt Dorothy cries out. Lord, I want to return home to you. Well, instead of singing, Lord, whatever you're doing in this season, please don't do it without me. Get yourself a new song and sing, Lord, whatever you're doing in this season, I thank you that you are not doing it without me. Lord, I don't want to be one of the nine. I don't want to forget your many blessings and just who you are. I don't want to be the one who returns and thank you just in troubling waters. Yes. There are times when it appears people all around me may be getting blessed and you're left wondering and waiting. This reminds me of a story in St. John where a certain man probably thought to himself he, he was lying in wait, waiting for the waters to be troubled. Yet he had no one to help him. Hundreds of people close by. When you get a minute, you might want to read about the story in John 5th chapter. There was a feast and the Jews um, went up to Jerusalem. And um, there was a man that could not get into the waters by himself. And people passing him by. Jesus saw him. Jesus saw him. This was during a time when they say angels would go down to a certain time of the season. And they would trouble the water. And this man, he had been sick for over 38 years. Jesus saw him. And Jesus knew he had been there for a while. And Jesus said, will thou be made whole? The man says to Jesus, sir, I have no man who would put me into the water. And Jesus said, rise up, take up your bed and walk. And immediately the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked. And on the same day was the Sabbath. This man was made whole on the Sabbath day. But Jesus told him, get up, get up. The Bible lets us know that there is nothing too hard for God. This man had been sick for 38 years. And during his season, he made his way to the pool. But can you hear him singing? Lord, while you are passing out blessings, don't forget about me. I can imagine he must have had some faith. For he kept coming back to that pool. In spite of what people may have thought about him. In spite of how ill he was, he kept coming. In spite of how long he had been sick, he kept coming. He was waiting for the movement of the water. What about you? I thank God that Jesus died on the cross for me and was resurrected with all power. So now I don't need to wait for a certain season to be blessed. I don't wait, need to wait for a certain season to be blessed. Instead of lying there waiting for your blessings to overtake you, start a praise party now. Begin to praise Him from deep to within and you will see that the praise from the inside will make its way to the outside and what a party you would have. Don't be one of the mind of the nine who forgets to return to Jesus and thank him. Go to the Psalms. Use the Psalms as a starting point, if you will, for just thanking God. Psalms 104th chapter says, Psalms 104th verse says, Enter into the gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. Psalms 50 and 14 says, Offer unto God thanksgiving and pay thy vows unto the Most High. Psalms 95 to let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise unto him with psalms. Just stop praising him. Philippians 4 6 says be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests 
be made known unto God. Give him thanks always. Our thanks should be sincere from the heart. For God knows our inner thoughts. And he knows whether we are sincere or not. Don't ever forget to thank him for what he's already done. For if it were not for the Lord on my side. Where would I be? Don't be one of the nine. Praise him now. Glorify him. Praise his name for he is God. Thank God for all days, not just a season of thanksgiving. Every day, make it a season of thanksgiving. Praise his name for truly he is worthy to be praised. Thank him now for all your needs are already met through Christ Jesus. Thank him now. Because he is the great I am. Thank him now. For his mighty works are all over the place. Thank him for giving his only begotten son. Don't be one of the nine who didn't return to thank him. Say, Lord, I want to thank you for what you already done. Say, Lord, I'm not going to wait until I see results or receive rewards. I'm thanking you right now, Lord. I don't want to be one of the nine. I'm not going to wait until I feel things or things look better. I'm thanking you right now. Lord, I don't want to be one of the nine. I'm not going to wait until people say they are sorry. Until they stop talking about me. Lord, I am thanking you right now. Lord, I don't want to be one of the nine. Who don't come back and thank you. I'm not going to wait until the, my bo- the body's pain disappears. I am thanking you right now. Lord, I'm not going to wait until my financial situation improves. I am thanking you right now. Lord, I don't want to be one of the nine, one of the ungrateful who does not return to thank you. I am thanking you right now. Lord, I'm not going to wait until I get that promotion on the job. Until I get that job, I'm going to thank you right now. Lord, I'm not going to wait until I understand every experience in my life that has caused me pain or grief. Lord, I'm not going to wait until I'm over... Until I get over the grief that has has been on me for a while. Lord, I want to get rid of that right now. Because I'm going to praise you and thank you right now. I'm thanking you, Lord. I'm not going to wait until the journey gets easier. Or the challenges are removed. Lord, I want to thank you right now. God, I'm thanking you because I'm alive. I'm thanking you, Lord God, because you are yet faithful. I'm thanking you, Lord God, because I've made it through the day's difficulties. I'm thanking you, Lord God, because with you, Lord God, I have been able to walk around the obstacles. I'm thanking you, Lord God, because with you, I have the ability and the opportunity to do more and to do better. I thank you, Lord God, that even in the valley of the shadow of death, you are with me, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, because I'm wonderfully and beautifully made, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, because you make me the head and not the tail. I thank you, Lord God, because you are the doctor of all doctors. I thank you, Lord God, that I don't have to worry about the courtroom, Lord God, because you are the attorney of all attorneys, Lord God. I thank you, Father. I thank you, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, because of who you are. Praise your name, Lord God. Lord God, I don't want to be one of the nine who don't come back to give you thanks. I want to be that one who praise your name forevermore because you are worthy to be praised. Because you are God. And without you, I can do nothing. But with you, I can do all things because I get my strength from you. I thank you, Lord God, right now. Because, Lord God, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. I thank you right now, Lord God. Because great is he that is in me than he who is in the world. I thank you right now, Lord God. Because you said where two or three are coming together, touching and agreeing, that you are in the midst. I thank you, Lord God, right now because of your presence, Lord God. I thank you, Father, for you are God of all gods. I thank you because you are yet faithful, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, because you are so wonderful, Lord God. I thank you, Father. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. Don't ever forget to give him thanks, brothers and sisters. Yes, this is a season of thanksgiving. This is time to be set aside. But thank him every day. When you rise in the morning, give him thanks. Give him thanks. Give him thanks. Thank him for your salvation. Thank him for your salvation. Are you saved? You see, we don't want to assume that everyone listening is saved. For those who are not saved, for those who are unsure of their salvation, I want you to listen very carefully. At the end of the day, when you breathe your last breath or when Jesus comes back, what will be your destiny? Have you accepted Jesus Christ into your heart? Then you're saved. Have you acknowledged that God sent His Son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for your sins. Have you asked for forgiveness? Have you repented of your sins? And by faith have you received his forgiveness? Romans 10 9 says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus. And shalt believe in our heart that God has raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. See the first thing you need to do is you need to admit that you are a sinner. For Romans three ten says as it is written there is none righteous. No not one. You need to be willing to turn from your sin. That is to repent. 
You need to believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. You need to believe that he was buried and that he rose from the dead. Romans 10.10 10, uh, says, For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Through prayer, you can invite Jesus to your life right now. You can invite Jesus into your heart right now to become your personal Savior. You see, he needs to become your personal Savior before he can become your Lord. Romans 10.13 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So if you have not accepted him as your Savior, go ahead and pray this prayer with me. Dear God, I am a sinner and I need forgiveness. I believe that Jesus Christ shed his precious blood and died for my sin. Lord, I'm willing to turn from my sin. I now invite you, Lord, to come into my heart and my life as my personal Savior. I thank you, Father, for cleansing me. I thank you, Lord, by faith I am saved. You see, if you trusted Jesus as your personal Savior right there, you've just begun a very wonderful new life in him. Now you need to get a good Bible and read it every day. Get to know him. Talk to God in prayer every day. Get baptized, worship, fellowship, and serve other Christ, Christ, Christians excuse me, at a local church where Christ is preached and the Bible is the final authority. Tell others about Jesus Christ every day. Amen. Amen. Lord, I thank you for this word that's gone forth. I thank you, Lord God, for any of those who have called upon you right now that are saved, Lord God. I thank you, Father, that they're sealed unto the day of redemption, Father. Lord God, I thank that you, God, that this word has been encouragement to someone, Lord God. And that we will reflect not just on this season of Thanksgiving, but we reflect on your goodness and your kindness every day of our lives, Lord God. And that we remember, Lord God, to give you praise and worship, Lord God, for what you already done, knowing, trusting, and believing that the best is still yet to come. We thank you, Father. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for your mercy, your grace, Lord God, and your many blessings in our lives, seen and unseen. We give you the glory right now. We give you praises right now, for you and you alone are worthy to be praised. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen. Amen and amen. Well, I want to wish you all a very happy and prosperous Thanksgiving season. And remember, every day is a happy time when you are in Christ. Amen.